So, what we've achieved is we're beginning to complete the picture. We know the age of the universe, we know its temperature at different times. And it's from that and our knowledge of physics we've been able to work out what happens at each and every stage from the beginning up to now, with a few bits still remaining to be filled in. So, we know back at the start of time the temperature was like this. Now, can we go and see that? How can we look at it? Well, the way that we do it is to make huge particle accelerators and speed the particles up and smash them into each other because smashing them into each other recreates momentarily conditions of extremely high temperature. And once we get to this sort of temperature in those collisions, we are seeing the physics of those first moments. And we do that at various laboratories around the world, such as at Geneva, and what do we find? We find that this energy produces matter and antimatter in equal amounts all the time. Now, that's a puzzle. And it's one of the big questions we're going to have to face. Energy turns into matter and antimatter under these conditions. The universe cools, and what are we left with today? Well, the energy is still around. That's what Penzias and Wilson discovered for us, the three degrees cold remnant of that original energy. The matter is still around. That's us. What happened to the antimatter? It's all disappeared. Well, our conjecture is that just after the matter and antimatter were created, the universe was so compact, they bumped into each other again and annihilated. Let's see if we can replay that in the theatre to get an idea of what's going on. So, Bryson has created some more magic for us. Imagine that this is a snapshot of the universe just after the matter and antimatter has been created in that first moment. And the matter and the antimatter are the purple and the white bits, created in equal amounts. And then they bump together again and annihilate. Let's see what happens with annihilation. Well, what are we left with? You think that's a mistake, don't you? <laughs> that's you and me and everything. Somehow, the antimatter is gone and a little bit of matter has been left over. That little bit of leftover matter are the stars in the sky and everything around here that you can see. So the matter of the universe that we know today is just a little bit that got left over from the Big Bang. The flash that you saw has cooled off with the universe and is the three degrees background radiation that Penzias and Wilson have seen. But that is us. Interesting. Thank you. So, the matter that's left over is us. Let's see what we know about that matter. Begin to make sense of the leftover bits. Well, here we've got some models of the atomic elements. The light ones, the simplest ones, hydrogen and helium, are simple because their nucleus is itself very simple. Hydrogen just contains a single positively charged proton in the middle, made in the first moments of the Big Bang. Helium is also fairly simple. It's got four members in it, and that also gets formed a little bit later after the Big Bang. That we can all understand. But what is the puzzle is, look at these other elements, like carbon and sulfur. They're getting bigger and bigger nuclei, more and more complicated. And the very heavy ones, like iron and copper and so forth, have really big nuclei. How on earth did these things get made? Well, that's the question. What we think happened is the following thing. And I'm going to show you on a video. We're going to take a journey together from the Big Bang. We're going to hitchhike a ride on one of the first particles to be made, a proton. So here's the Big Bang happening, energy bursting out, 
in, after about a billionth of a second, the primeval seeds, the quarks, will appear. And here they are, gradually forming themselves in groups of threes to make the thing we call the proton, eventually the seed of hydrogen. So here, the first protons are forming, and they're just hurling around. And eventually, here's the one at the bottom that we're going to take our ride on. So let's sit with this and watch what happens. There's lots of protons. There's nothing other than protons, all of them hurling out from the Big Bang along with us. But gradually, you see, as it cools a bit, they start clustering together, little groups of threes and fours. Helium is also being formed. Very quickly, there's so much of this around that gravity starts pulling it together, and you begin to get these huge masses of hydrogen gas that we call galaxies of stars. And here, we're beginning to zoom in towards one of those stars, because our proton, the one we're sitting on, has been trapped by the gravity of that star. There's the hydrogen atom shooting in to one of these hot stars in the early universe. And here start coming in other protons. Everything is tumbling in to that star. As they do so, getting hotter and hotter, providing the fuel to keep that star burning. And as we look in the middle of the star, now see what starts happening that the simple nuclei start bumping into each other and building up more complicated nuclei, the seeds of the heavier elements, getting as complicated as carbon and going up bigger and bigger, eventually getting a huge cluster together, a nucleus of iron. Now, the star can't hold together much longer, and eventually it explodes and throws this iron nucleus and all the other heavy nuclei out into space, <coughs> polluting the cosmos. And it's that, we believe, happened about 5,000 billion years ago at the time when our solar system was forming. And those heavy elements from a long lost star polluted all around here and ended up as the carbon that's in your bodies and the oxygen and everything else around us here today. So that's the sequence that we believe happened. Now, it's not just belief. In fact, this is still going on. And we have seen it going on very dramatically just six years ago. One of these explosions, they're called a supernova, happened in the southern heavens. Here is a picture of the large Magellanic Cloud. It's a small galaxy just off the edge of the Milky Way. You can't see it from up here because the Earth's in the way, but if you go down to Australia, you can see it in the heavens. And in 1987, suddenly, in the middle of this galaxy, a new star erupted called a supernova. Now, in fact, it really happened 200,000 years ago because light takes that long to get from there to here. What's happened recently is the astronomers have looked at that supernova again and see what they find. There is the star that's exploded, but look at this ring all the way around the outside. That is debris that has been thrown off, heavy elements in there being thrown out across space, just like happened 5,000 million years ago around here. So maybe that already is beginning to see new life forms that will be developed from these heavy atoms from that supernova. So what you're seeing here is the actual explosion of a star. And the astronomers have been studying that over the last six years and learning what actually happens when stars explode. And the amazing thing is that what happens seems to fit in exactly with what we think should happen with our theories of how the elements are born. So, this seems to be the explanation of the matter that we know and love, that makes us. The very simple bits formed in the Big Bang, ended up in stars, built up the heavier and heavier versions, the star exploded, polluted the cosmos, ended up in us. So we seem to have a pretty good picture of matter, and there it is. So, we've explained matter. We've explained the universe out there. Well, not quite. We've explained between about 1% and 10% of it. There's a little bit, you know, the majority of it, is <laughs> some mysterious stuff called dark matter. 